Well, silver and gold are up today. In the comments, someone was saying something to the fact that I was like OCD, oh no, OCCAD. I don't know about that, but hey, look, it's raining out. Can you hear the rain? And you might hear some thunder. And this morning there was a bear on my street. Glad I didn't go for a run while well, it's raining out, but I've been doing like four miles a day, five days a week. I'm getting back into running shape. And whatever the, I can't remember what the original thing I was saying was, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so I, I'm going to um, answer another comment here. Is someone was saying how they're tired of hearing these multimillionaires as really nice and cool guys. Okay, well, I will share with you a millionaire who, he, um, I won't say not a nice guy, but a lot of them, um, have stress, and that doesn't mean they're enjoying life than any more than the rest of us. So, for example, I knew this guy, Mike Valvo. You see, here he is in the picture. He's 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 art. He he's um the referee for the Kasparov IBM Deep Blue match. Remember when, when the World Test Champion played the computer? That's not the computer, but a human was entering and moving into the computer. But yeah, so Mike Valvo, um, you know, very successful guy. You know, genius IQ. Um, all this, rubbing elbows with world champions. He, he had a stroke in the late 90s. He lost like 30 IQ points. Because he'd go to our, our, our club and he said that he, he was saying how he had a stroke. He, had to get, he got tested. He lost like 30 IQ points. So he was only merely smart as opposed to genius after that. And the poor guy passed away from a heart attack at age 62. And, you know, the, the guy always seemed like he was stressed out. I mean, the guy was always stressed out at the club. I don't know what it was. He should be, he should be happy. I mean, he's a genius. He's got money. He dresses well. He's got all these high-powered buddies. But he had the weight of the world on his shoulder some, for some reason. And then he had the stroke, and then he passed away. So, um, like City Guy, but looks like he's probably, um, not, he's, he's probably not having strokes and heart attacks. And he's probably, you know, in, in good health. And he'll probably look to be a lot longer than 62. So yeah, a lot of a. Uh, I do know some people who are worth like tens of millions, and they're so stressed out. All they do is work all day. They don't seem to enjoy their wealth. And it's, I'm like, well, what's the point? I mean, so yeah, we you know you, you hear people on YouTube saying, oh, this guy's a nice guy, millionaire, nice guy. Well, a lot of them are really stressed out, and they've been studies showing that happiness. You know, if you, if you take someone's level of happiness, you give them millions and millions of dollars, and six months later, they're at the same original happiness they were six months previous. Okay, so, I'm um, getting back to happiness, right? Gold and silver are happiness, right? Um, you, you know, so, so, so and anyway, um, I got, there's this blog I really like reading uh, about Bron Suchesky. He um, works for the Perth Mint, and he's got really... He, he's got like really good um, analysis on the gold market and silver market, of course, because he works with the Perth Mint, and of course the Perth Mint is the Perth Mint. And so I, I kind of share um, the philosophy in this regard of Martin Armstrong, where he says the real bear, mar sorry, the real bull market can't resume until a lot of these falsehoods are squashed, because serious people who do serious research about precious metals are going to see a lot of these ridiculous. Um, easily disprovable theories and then be turned away. So you got to give the truth. If, if gold and silver can stand on their own, right, they don't need to have myths and lies to try and trick people into buying them. They just stand up on their own. So this guy's blog is pretty good and he, he, he talks about the whole backwardation thing, right? There's the GOFO and there's backwardation and there's topics that are, it's, 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 when it comes to marketing, there's something called like tech, tech, technical mumbo jumbo. You know how when they sell toothpaste, they try and say these um, very advanced scientific words so that you use the word and you think you're smart because you know the scientific word for a product. But in reality, this, this scientific word has no real relation to the product or the ingredient has no real relation to the product. Like for, especially for detergents, they say, we've got blah, 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 blah. Or even like, we, now we have an extra ply to our whatever. And it's like, well, how many plies do you need? How many, this doesn't matter. What matters is that people hear these terminology and think they're smart. This is why, this is why backwardation is somewhat often, I think, misused. Um, because most people don't know what backwardation is. Um, so if someone um, says, hey, I'm going to tell you my version of backwardation. And you're going to like how it sounds because it's going to make things 
sound good for precious metals, people are, are likely to, to listen and believe that, even though the person telling them might not understand backwardation, and they might not. So Braun goes through this whole backwardation thing, and he, he answers lots and lots and lots of comments from people who are questioning him. And so, oh, another thing too is traders don't, quote, hate gold and silver. A lot of them own gold and silver, and as a part of their permanent portfolios, you know, obviously it's not all of them, but they, they do have some. And when it's going up, they're buying it. Like Mike Norman has bought gold. You know, that guy, Mike Norman, someone I know met Mike Norman. And Mike Norman, yeah, Mike Norman will be, bu will be buying gold. He might sell it back, but Mike Norman is often in the gold market, despite him saying how he thinks that gold should not be money. He's still in the gold market. So you got to realize that with these guys. So um, going back to Braun, he says, he talks about how, um, how, um, how 400 ounce bars and the retail level demand are two separate markets. He talks about coins and like the big bars, like 400 ounce bar, ooh, big stuff. I think that's gold, bigger than my Thai gold bars, right? Awesome. Um, he says there's a separation between retail and wholesale. Most of the retail problems slash premiums are driven by production capacity shortages rather than shortages of raw gold or silver. For example, during a 2008 financial crisis, the blogosphere was going crazy about shards of silver, particularly, yet the Perth Mint was shipping in 20 tons of silver each week from London for about 20 weeks on end. Go and look, have a look at my blog at the time, he says. He says, it would be logical for us to hype up shortages so we could increase coin and kilo bar premiums and make more profit. I've rarely seen any market, com mar market comment coming out of the major refiners talking about how crap demand is. Shortage hype is used by coin dealers to one, get people to buy now, and two, pay excessive premiums. Perth Mint has a bit more integrity, and we stick to the facts. Why do you think the Perth Mint and I get so much crap from the gold blogosphere? Because we are wrecking their sales pattern. That's true. If they really wanted to sell more stuff, they should just like hype up all the stories and make up stories. But Brian says he's trying to get um, truth in gold and silver. And that's what he says, and he's got all kinds of posts on this, and you can take a look too. So, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.